kitchen. Hmm? That thing that you're doing. My essay? Uh, yeah, deadlines this week. And there's still quite a bit to do. Oh, well, why don't you go back home then? Well, you've got your radiotherapy. And? You don't need to be with me all the time, you know. It's your first one, and I want to be there. Why? We're not exactly going to be taking selfies or anything, are we? Oh, look, my first radiotherapy. Woohoo! Well, I was going to have some T-shirts made oh. saying I went to hospital and all I got was this lousy radiotherapy. <laughs> no, seriously. Get back home and spend some proper time on that. I want to be here with you and with Bertie. We're a family, right? Doing this together. Shouldn't you be going for your radiotherapy? Will he be all right? He's doing really well. OK, yeah. Um, I've convinced Daniel that I'm all right going on my own, so he'll be here. Sorry, is he all right to be doing that, Nia? I don't think he's disturbing anyone. Oh. I was kind of hoping that he'd say no, so they'd have to go on to do it. Under your feet, is it? No. I'm just worried that he's doing too much and he won't be told. Did it work? He's doing an MA while he's working at a restaurant. And if he's not there, is he with us? The stress of it all can't be good for him, can it? Right. You're family around, aren't you? Mm. Lean on them. Times like these, family and friends always ask if there's anything they can do. So give them things to do. People who want to help you, let them. Oh, it's going to be a proper little heartbreaker, isn't it? Kirky, are you coming out? What's your name for you? I'm not stupid. Mm, we're rearranging the big Madonna party. Oh, yeah. I thought you cancelled it. No, we're not letting Gina ruin our fun. You're still coming, aren't you? Uh, to be honest, Sean, my first radiotherapy session has really wiped me out. Oh, we'll see how you feel. I'm sure Daniel will sit with Bertie. Daniel needs a night off more than I do. I'm really worried about him. He's burning the candle at both ends. Oh, hello, sailor. Happy don't preach. <laughs> I'm in trouble, deep. I'll say you are. Oh, ignore him, Kirky. I think you look great. I'm not even going to ask. Right, everybody, back to work, please. Big order to get out. Sinead's brought some new pics of Bertie in. Oh, let's have a look. What oh. is it about women and baby photos? Take the party's still going out, then. Uh, yeah, we're having another whip round to cover what you nicked. For the last time, I didn't nick anything. Ugh. Carla, can I have a word, please? Yeah. Surprised she's not sacked you. What can I do for you? I'm quitting. Waiting for a reference, you're going to be waiting a long time. You think I'm a thief as well, don't you? Look, Gina, all I know is we've got a lot of work on and now I'm a pair of vans short. Are those hands nick that money or not, I haven't a clue. Well, at least you're not accusing me. What are you going to do now? Oh, whatever it is, it won't be around here. I've just written the same line three times now. Well, you look tired. Perhaps you should uh, take a break. I haven't got time. I've got to write 5,000 words in a day and a half. My shift starts in 10 minutes, and then I've got to get back to the hospital to visit Bertie. That's quite a schedule you've taken on. I'll be all right. I can do it. I can do it. Well, the fact that you can do anything doesn't mean you can do everything. Where on earth did you get that? A cracker. One of my mother's sayings. Uh, that and... Somewhere there's a village missing an idiot. But I do think you should take a break. If, if you don't get sufficient rest, you, you, you could cause untold damage to, to your grades, to your health, not to mention the damage you can do to others. Well, I haven't really got much of a choice at the moment, Roy. But couldn't you ask for an extension on the essay? Well, what would the point? Still got to get done. It's not like I'm going to have any more time next week or the week after. In fact, I'm thinking... 
I might just need to drop the MA. Well, that would be a real shame. After all the work you put in. Yeah, well, something's got to give, hasn't it, Roy? Let's hope it's not you. Yeah. No, I'll be all right. Don't worry about me. I'll be fine. All right, thanks, Roy. You're a change. Hey. Oh, thank you. She just... Seriously. Business is booming, I'm looking after it, all right? What do you want to drink? Daniel! I'm clearly buying for everyone. What would you like? No, I can't. I've only come in to get some change for the bistro. You all right, hon? You look shattered. Yeah, yeah, I'll be fine. As long as I can sleep standing up. Mm. Oh, Daniel. Yeah, yeah, I am. We saw him before. He looked tired. That's the least of it, isn't it? I'm surprised he's in work. Oh, well, we need the money, don't we? The bistro, though? That's got to be a food hygiene nightmare. Oh, but he's not just working. He's looking after me. He's got an essay due in tomorrow, and he goes into the hospital every day to see Bertie. What a trooper. I had it last Christmas. I couldn't get out of the bathroom. What are you banging on about? You said he was burning the candle at both ends. It's bad enough puking up, but getting the runs at the same time. That's not what burning the candle at both ends means. I think I know what burning the candle at both ends means. <sighs> Listen, we can't have Daniel doing all this on his own. Yeah, I know, but you know what he's like? He's too proud to ask for any help. And I'm not exactly fit to help with anything at the moment, am I? Well, you just concentrate on getting through the radiotherapy. I'll sort this out, OK? You don't need to be worrying about Daniel. Thanks, Annie Bess. Hi. So, look who I bumped into on the way back from the shop. Hello. Morning. Yeah, so we got talking and I mentioned to him, you know, you're having a few issues finishing your essay. I see. Happens to the best of us. <laughs> yeah, well, I thought, you know, since Brian used to teach English... I uh... actually uh, ran the department. Oh, yeah, well, maybe we could bounce a few ideas off him. Wow, you two are really bad at this. You didn't just bump into Brian, did you? No. No. So, how did she rope you into it? Uh, Sinead spoke to Beth, who spoke to Kathy, then spoke to me. So, tag team style. He just wants to help. I don't need any help. Right, well, how much have you done today so far? I'm still throwing ideas out there. Daniel? Hmm? You have been staring at that computer screen since half five. How much? It's not about quantity, it's about quality. How much? Nothing. I've hit a brick wall with the conclusion. Who's chewing at the end of the day today? Mm -hmm. So why not let me give it a whirl? All right, fine. Knock yourself out. <sighs> Are you serious? Brian, you don't even understand the subject matter. Like you said, it's just the conclusion. All I have to do is read what you've already written and then just, oh, flesh out a summary. Yeah, but you have to actually understand it as well. Contextually, I mean. I'm not suggesting I can dive straight in, but I do possess a fairly decent grasp of the subject, even though I say so myself. No, I'm sure that you're more than capable. I'm incredibly grateful for the offer, but it'd still be cheating. Nonsense. You'd still have ownership. Uh, just look at me as um, a study aid. Obviously, I'd expect you to rework whatever I write. Oh, come on, Daniel. Please. Why don't you go see Bertie for a bit? You know, recharge your batteries. Sometimes you need to know when to step away. I would love to see him today. Are you sure you don't mind? It would be my honour. <clears throat> OK. OK, all right, fine, yeah. What's the worst that could happen? <sighs> if you ask me, you've done him a favour. A favour? Daniel could get kicked off the course. The best thing for him. He should be focusing on Sinead and Bertie, not on some useless qualification. Uh, d do you mind? For your information, I've got an MA in English Literature. Uh, a first-class one, for that matter. <laughs> and now you're running a sweet shop. I rest my case. Oh, here she is, sir. Let me do the talking. Oh, hiya. Hey, love. Hi, how's oh. Bertie doing? Oh, yeah, he's really good today, you know. He's loving spending some proper time oh. with his dad. Thanks to this amazing man. <clears throat> <sighs> what? Accidents happen, Brian. Do you know, I'm just a bit surprised that the essay wasn't backed up on the cloud. Daniel is usually really strict about that. Oh, I forgot about the cloud. How embarrassing. 
What's the foolish? Oh, don't worry about it. Well, you missed a word just there. Oh. Don't. Ah, perfect timing. Evening. You're still here. Talk about dedication. Uh, Brian had a few technical issues. I managed to spill coffee and rice all over your computer. But we are having it fixed. OK. And the essay's finished. Mm. Cool. Mm. Uh, I, I thought you might want to read through it again, maybe give it a polish. No. Sure, the conclusion that you've written is terrific. Actually, I was thinking more oh, about... Do you know your... what? We really must be going. <laughs> we'll get out of your hair. Come on, love. Uh, yes, I'll, uh, I'll pick up my laptop tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, listen, thanks. Because of you, I got to have an incredible day with my son. Oh, it, uh, it was my pleasure. Yeah, you really are the best, Brian. Come here. Thank you. Isn't he just... Well, I'm not sure, sure about that. <clears throat> good night, good night. Good night, guys. Good night, guys. Good night, guys. Oh, all right. Let me just send this off. And then I think that we should go out for dinner. Uh, do you not think maybe you ought to read through your essay again before you send it? Nope. Be fine. What? She's not like you. Yeah, well, it's called getting my priorities straight. Do you know, I've just had a really lovely day with my son. And I intend to have a really lovely evening with my beautiful wife. Tonight, my only homework is you. Mm. Yeah, I get that. Thanks, but it's, it's no excuse. I should have dug out those articles that you suggested. OK, well, I'll get it to you as soon as. Yeah, thanks for being so understanding. Cheers, Russ. Supervisor? Yeah. Not impressed. Oh, so I didn't like your essay then? Well, that depends on what you mean by not like. If you mean poorly argued, poorly researched, poorly written, then yeah. He must have liked something about it. The conclusion, <laughs> apparently. He said, and I quote, there was a glimmer of original thought that was expressed with playful, deadpan irony that was otherwise absent. Hmm. Well, that's something, I suppose. Is it? I didn't write the conclusion, did I? Just the bits that he's tearing to shreds. I'm going to have to speak to Brian before I resubmit. Resubmit? Hmm. Thankfully, Ross put it down to circumstance and not ability, so he's going to let me have another go. I need to make a decent fist of it this time, otherwise, well, I'll be out of my ear. What can I get you? Um, orange juice, Coke and Brian. Oh, it's very kind. Uh, half a bitter, please. Oh. I wanted to have a word with you about that essay, if I could. My tutor gave me some feedback. Oh, really? I trust he was suitably impressed. Not really. When I say feedback, it was more of a demolition job, if I'm honest. What's this? Oh, my latest assignment. Didn't go down well. Didn't go down well at all. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I mean, I try my best for you, but, well, literary criticism is a necessarily um, subjective discipline. One man's meat is another man's uh, nut roast. Wait, 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 wait. Are you telling me that you wrote Daniel's essay? Oh, no, Ken, sorry, it was my fault. He's been so preoccupied with me, he's just not had chance. So you let Brian write it? Well, no wonder it was so poorly received. I beg your pardon? I know what they say about monkeys and typewriters, but you are not equipped to write an academic paper. I happen to have an M.A. Yeah, and what does that sound for? Master of the Asinine? Look, Daniel is a brilliant student. He's not that brilliant. If you must know, he wrote 90% of everything except the conclusion. Where, no doubt, his carefully crafted arguments were distilled into crass generalizations. That's not really true. The conclusion was the only bit that he liked. What? what? Yeah, he thought it was original. Nicely written. Uh, uh, this man is a PhD, I take it. Professor. Professor? Yeah, so if you could pot round the flat later when we get back from the hospital, I'd be grateful if you could give me some pointers. Pointers? From him? Uh, uh, thank you, Daniel. I'd be delighted. Thank you. Keep change. Oh, thank you very much. Forget ah. the drink. What's wrong? Somebody else nipped in and bought the house. Oh, I'm sorry. They were very apologetic, but that's no use to me. Well, something else will come along. Right. 
Actually, something has. He says there's a flat nearby. He wants me to go and have a look at it. Oh, what is that? The Red Bank development? Not quite what I was after, but I'm going to go and see it now. I'd really value a second opinion. Yeah, well, I'd love to, but I was hoping to help Daniel with... No, no, no. You go, Ken. I've got Daniel's essay covered. Getting stronger every day. He is. We need to focus on getting you better now. You look tired. Oh, I'll be fine once my treatment's over. Besides, I found the best medicine that there is. And he's lying right there. But yeah, um, you best get going. You've got your work to do, haven't you? Does it matter? Of course it does. Where's this come from? A middle-aged ex-primary school teacher wrote the only worthwhile part of my essay. Look, I know you've had a knockback, but to be honest, I think anyone would in the circumstances. It doesn't mean that you failed. Yet. Please, will you stop feeling sorry for yourself? You need to get a grip. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's me whinging about nothing. You're going through hell. No, no, that's not what I'm saying. No, all I'm saying is... Well, there's more to life than just living, isn't there? This is important to you, so it's important to me. It could wait. It doesn't have to. Especially not on my account. I was frightened of cancer. And you're frightened that you might not be up to your masters. Instead of running away from it, face it head on. You mean embrace the fact that I might not be as clever as I think I am? No. Prove to yourself that you are. Go on and write the essay of your life. And blow that flaming supervisor away. What would I do without you, eh? Make a brew and a bourbon cream to get the old creative juices flowing. <laughs> Writers in their biscuits. That's an essay in itself. I can see Tolstoy now. Samovar on the boil in the corner. Plate of macaroons at his right hand. He must have been knee-deep in crumbs by the time he finished <laughs> War and Peace. It's really fascinating, but it's not hugely relevant. No, sorry, where were we? I was just discussing Poe's assonance. Oh, Poe, you say? Wasn't he, um, a Teletubby? <laughs> Edgar Allan, <laughs> critic, poet, writer of macabre tales. You'll always find a Poe tucked under my bed should I find the urge in the wee small hours. William, that's Ken. He's on his way up. Ken, what's he want? Hello. Uh, just passing. I thought I might cast an eye over this essay. It's all in hand, thank you. I did read English at university, you know. Yeah. And Poe was contemporary fiction. Do you mind if I take a look, Daniel? Please, be my guest. Right, ah, where are we then? Ah, ah, ah. Um, that's a little bit florid, do you think? <laughs> Those are my words. Uh, there's nothing wrong with a colourful turn of phrase. You're colourful and lurid. I mean, this is a piece of scholarship, not a penny dreadful. Uh, well, you should know better than me. I did read your little bodice ripper in the Gazette. Bodice ripper? It was nothing of the kind. Maybe in the sun. Have you got much left to do? Cut to the finish. You look like you could do with a drink. Yes. Criticism is no sphere for the prey. And smut is no substitute for talent. Hey! Just been knocking on yours. Oh, is everything all right? Yeah, yeah, Sinead's just rung. They're letting Bertie come home. Finally! Yeah, yeah, so I'm just going to go and get him now. Oh, would you like me to come with you? No, no, I'll be fine. Oh, well, look, is there anything I can do? Just let me know. Well, you could always do a night shift. The three hourly feeds are a bit of a killer. I'm joking. <laughs> uh, but we'll have to have, like, a welcome home party or something, yeah? Absolutely! We do, Bertie. You feeling OK? Yeah. Looking forward to it just being us two. 
You and me. No doctors and nurses appearing every five minutes. Just us. Right, come on. Let's get you out. Oh, is this your doing? No. No, it must be Beth. Oh, remember, I took the key off her. She kept stealing our milk, didn't she? Oh, yeah. Well, then who? Ah, caught me. This is you? Yeah, I wanted to surprise you. Oh, oh thanks, Ken. Oh. Ah. Well, welcome home, young man. Does he look bigger to you? He's a colossus. <laughs> uh, do you want a brew? I'll get it. No, no, you won't. You think we'll be all right? What do you mean? We don't know what we're doing. Well, um, I'll let you into a secret about parenting. None of us know what we're doing. You just have to pretend that you do. Another one. Tell you what, I'll finish making that bottle. It's due a feed in a few minutes, isn't he? Oh, I can't wait for his welcome home party tomorrow. All the family are obviously going to want cuddles. Are you sure this part is a good idea? Uh, how do you mean? Well, we don't want him catching anything, do we? Nobody's got any coughs or colds, so he should be all right. You have sterilised, haven't you? Of course. And you've cleaned everywhere, Daniel. I mean proper, proper cleaning. Sinead, stop worrying. There's not a speck of dust anywhere. I've even disinfected the worktops. Right, good. No, that's good. That's good. Right. OK. It's great uh, having him home, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Hey. Can you sleep? Is he breathing? What? I don't think he is. No, no, he's fine. He's just sleeping. Here. Oh, God, thank God for that. Find me now. You nearly give me an heart attack then. No, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm just worried that something's going to happen. I feel like I need to be watching him all the time. Look, <sighs> they wouldn't have let him out of the hospital if he wasn't OK, right? Got to trust them. I know, I know. It's just when we were in the hospital, he was being monitored all the time. It, it felt safe. Whereas now, just look at him. He's so tiny, Daniel. And he's just got us. What if we do something wrong? Or what if... Hey, hey. Enough with the what ifs. He's with the best people, cos we're the ones that love him the most. We're not going to let anything happen to him, OK? Why don't you go back to bed, try and get some sleep? Going to need your strength for the party tomorrow. <laughs> it's again for the teddy. Sorry, I can't come to the party. Organising Rana's memorial for tomorrow and... Honestly, it's fine. That's so much more important. What time people come in? Twelve. Any later and they run the risk of staying into the evening. And I don't want Sinead getting worn out. Well, have fun. Sweetheart, how are you doing? Oh, look at him. This is your great Auntie Beth. Do you remember from the hospital? Can I get you a drink? I have a beer, sir. Huh? Oh, yeah, me and all. He's looking well on it. Nice try. Look like death warmed up and you know it. No, <laughs> you don't. We got you a present. Oh, thank you. Oh, give him to me while you open it. Oh, it's all right, I won't drop him. Right. Oh, there we go. I'm sorry it's not much, but you know what, with us both being out of work. Oh, 
it's fine. I don't expect champagne and caviar for the same reason. Good thing for you, Daniel, if you're not getting much kip. What's that? The class went forward last night. Means we lose an hour. So? Well, one less hour without sleep. Oh, yeah. I suppose I never thought of it like that. Oh, wow. Mm. Daniel, have you seen that? Yeah. Mm. Did you embroider that by hand? I made it by hand. <gasps> it's fabulous. <laughs> Some for keeping. Don't forget the card. Oh, right, yeah. You all that. Yeah. We made that as well. Oh. Oh, that's really kind of you. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit big, but uh, he'll soon grow into it. Thank you. You do. Hey. You okay? Yeah. You're not worried that he's come home too soon, are you? No. No. You know what? He'll be fine. <laughs> How tiny they are. I'm scared to hold him in case he breaks in two. Yeah, they do that a lot, baby's kit. Really? He's pulling your plonker. <laughs> All right. <gasps> that is beautiful. Wow. Oh, it's embroidered and all with his name. Like the one we gave him. Did you do it by hand, though? No, did you? Uh, a gift like that needs the personal touch. Oh, well, you've had a lot of time on your hands, haven't you, with the factory being closed? I think they'll go perfectly together. Yeah, me too. Look, they set each other off. Hi, hi hello. Hi. The uh, door was open, so we came out. For the new arrival from me. Ooh. Wow, what is this? Uh, I didn't know what you needed, so I've given you a check. Oh, thanks, Dad. Ah, how's he faring now he's home? Yeah, well, so far. He's got a good pair of lungs on him. Quite now, though. Oh, mm -hmm. He's wondering who all these intruders are. <laughs> <laughs> A baby monitor. Ah, nothing to do with me. You've got a monitor, haven't you? With a video. One that you can watch on the television. Oh, well, no. Oh, state of the art, this one. You can see and hear him all the time. I know how anxious new mothers can be. Wow, that's brilliant. Although, the first few months he'll be sleeping with us, won't he? But. Yeah. Well, it's there when you're ready. It must have cost a fortune. Well, it's not every day that one has a new baby. <laughs> oh, a glass of vino would be nice if there's one going. Oh, yeah. Dad? No, yeah, wouldn't say no. Claudia, I think you sat on... Huh? Oh! oh. Dirty baby clothes. Well, thanks for warning me. OK. What a cosy little den you have here. You know, I'm downsizing at the moment, though not quite as small as this. Ah, thank you. you. Thank you. Well, oh, nice to have all the family together. Yes. We must do this more often. A nice little hotel in town next time, maybe, eh? Chin chin, everybody. Cheers. Might be an idea, Kirk. Oh, yeah? <laughs> well, my presence certainly given the boys something to uh, play with in the bedroom. Mm. Hey, I'm surprised you're not in there, Dad, helping them out. Oh, why comes the technology turning my laptop on and off is my limit. <laughs> well, they're not getting very far, not judging by the telly. Hmm. Happen you've bought a dud, Claudia. Or maybe they need your quicksilver brain on the job, Beth. Uh, is there any more news on the factory, or...? Yeah, it's so awful about Rana, wasn't mm. it? Cherish what you've got with this little one. Don't worry. Any picture yet? No. <laughs> Still blank! Oh. He's tired. Mm. I don't need changing. So I, I don't get this. Come on, we've turned everything yeah. on. No, 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 you stay there. You have a rest. Here we go. What's it say in the manual? <laughs> This is so reassuring. Three tech-savvy young men drawing blanks. <laughs> All right. It's as if the monitor doesn't display. Yeah, yeah, I'll try this. Yes! Yay! Hi. Just Hi. ask the expert. Let's put a dry nappy on you, sweetheart. Will that make you feel better? Wow, what a great picture. Mm -hmm. And the sound, too. And don't take any notice of Claudia. It's a state-of-the-art monitor watching you. Which beats anything anyone else has bought. No. Dirty baby clothes. Get me a drink, someone, and be sharp about it. That's yeah, enough. Casey, little dump you've got that I don't have to live in. We'll go to a posh hotel next time. Bye.
Well, good luck to you, Ken. That's all I can say. Stuck with that piece of arm mutton. Oh, well, uh, 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 Daniel, please. Good luck to it. Well, at least you know it works. It is. Here we go. All right, see you back. Eh? All nice and dry now. Here you go. Oh. Oh. What? We, uh, got the tally to work. Oh, well, that's good then, isn't it? Hmm. All right. We could show you, if you like. Tracy. No, I mean, we keep saying how high-tech this thing is. Must have a replay button. Maybe we should make tracks. Oh, yeah, that's not a bad idea. Steve, are you joking? Uh, Daniel, do you want to uh, start bringing the food out? Yeah, good idea. And, um, to the record, Beth, mm. with reference to your comments, Claudia and I are just good friends. Oh, really? Then let me enlighten you too, Beth. Far from being not up to it, as you say, I am up for anything that goes. There are weeks when I have to chase off more men than you have. Deep fried chocolate bars or whatever it is that passes for food in your house. I'm sorry. You heard. I mean, what does that mean exactly? What's it to you? If we are nothing but good friends, then I'd say it's none of your business. Oh. Are you saying you want to see other people? You're the one who's telling everyone we're just friends. Steve, I don't want to listen to this. Will you do something? What do you want me to do? Please, will you just keep your voices down? The baby is asleep. A uh, cheese ball? Do you mind? That's my wife you're talking to. Oh, shut up. Well, look, if not friends, then companions. If I'd wanted a companion, Ken, I'd have got a dog. Well, what term do you want me to use, then? Uh, cheese ball? Are your companions with benefits? Benefits? She's asking if we have sex, uh, Ken. Steve! Oh, did, you know what? You've twisted me arm. I will have a bite of your cheesy balls. <laughs> I bet you'd rather have a cup of tea at your age. Look, just because we're knocking on a bit doesn't mean to say we don't enjoy sex. Steve! Well, the flipping sex police, if they want to have sex, let them have sex. Sex is a beautiful... Stop saying sex! Everyone be quiet, you're going to eat the baby! This wasn't the best idea for a party I've ever had. Mm, I'm going to go out for some more wine. I'll go. Uh, I want the fresh air. You OK? <sighs> Fine. Okay, we just watch Bertie first. No problem. Here, when's your Peter back? Not quite. Look, I know that you're worried about Bertie. No, it's not just that. It's nothing, actually. Forget it. Well, tell me. Ever since I found out I had cancer, I've been setting myself little goals, you know, like, if I can just make it through this next week, if I can just live long enough to have our baby, if I can be there for when he gets out of hospital and... Yeah, and you've done all of that. Yeah, I know I have. But what if that's what's been keeping me going all this time? Having them little goals. I'm worried about what's going to happen next now. I start this treatment in a couple of days. The brachy... What, what's it called? What Brachytherapy. Yeah, that. And... I know I keep going on about it, but what is going to happen to you and Bertie if anything goes wrong? It won't. You don't know that? I do. This is just the last hurdle, OK? Nothing's going to go wrong. Come on. Hey, this doesn't happen very often, but I've just had a brilliant idea. Have you tried the prawns? No, I can't eat anything with eyes. Feels like they're judging me. They probably are. Everybody else is. What is your problem? Do you know what? I don't even know why you're still here. If you and Ken aren't a proper item, then you're not really family, are you? Well, no. I'm not part of the family. Thank God. You're asking for a slap. Ladies, please. <laughs> Ladies? Her? Claudia, don't you think you should just leave? Are you seeing this, Ken? They're all ganging up on me now. You're not helping yourself. This is all about the video monitor, isn't it? You are not the only person to buy the baby a present, you know. We both did an all. 
before you pouch your bony backside all over him. Well, how was I to know? I thought they were dirty baby clothes. That was a homemade baby grow crafted with love. And a few squag ends from the factory, probably, eh? You stuck up get. Hey, hey, everybody, just pack it in. We've got an announcement to make. We are going to have a christening. And <clears throat> Auntie Beth, would you like to be a godparent? That's if you are up for it. Yeah, of course I will. And Tracy, we'd like you to be a godparent too. Seriously? Seriously? Steve, what are you saying seriously for like that? And I was thinking of asking Chesney. I know it might be a bit awkward. Oh, no, I think that's a lovely idea. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Oh, and just so you know, I'm not suggesting this because I don't think you're going to be around. You're going to live to be 105. Right, well, everyone. To Bertie. Mm. To Bertie. To Bertie. How many times be quiet? <laughs> See what you've done now. It's fine. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Oh, I'll get it. You all right? Uh, uh, there you go. It's uh, nice to see you up and about. Little one, all right? Oh, yeah, he's good. Oh, he's better than good. He's a stupendous. That's one of Daniel's words, not mine, by the way. All right, well, I did wonder. Yeah, he said the same about your barbs, actually. Most stupendous shave ever. Or was it superlative? Oh, I don't know. It was some long word, anyway. Mm, yeah. Well, he'll, uh, have to come in again. Yeah, I'll bob in later and book him in. He deserves something nice. I'm going in for my treatment tomorrow. Um, he can have it on the house. You don't have to do that. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. Just don't tell Nick, you know, I'm the pink and fluffy one, so... Mm. Anyway, I'll... Yeah, thank you. Uh -huh. <laughs> What have you done? What, you must have had an allergic reaction. I've got a date tonight with a posh builder called Bob. He's minted. Well, everything we use is organic. Organic what? Nettles? OK, obviously you don't have to pay. It's going to be on the house. On the house? I could sue you. Can I? Nah. Well, I'm going to have to cancel my date, aren't I? That man could have been my future husband. You could have ruined my life. Wow. Uh, you can have a voucher. He's in this stuff. Methyl paraben, phenoxy ethanol. Doesn't sound very organic to me. Oh, they are preservatives. You don't need them. Well, it's a bit late now. What if this happens again? Oh, it's unlikely. Yeah, well, we can't take the risk. Why didn't you check the ingredients? Oh, it's not my area of expertise, is it? Oh, I could help. But you're the one that's in charge. I'm the creative. Creative? Yeah, I do things with these hands that people only dream of. Whoa, whoa, you cut hair. I shape people's destinies. Um, hello? Give me an hour. Mm, shape people's destinies? Oh, sure. Wow. <laughs> Hang on, kid. We'll part this thing, even if it kills me. Hold it. It's easy if you just turn it, you know, like this. Oh, you're right, little one. <laughs> Three A-levels in a degree. You'd never know. Mm. Well, some things just take a bit of practice. Hey, listen. I was coming to see you, actually. I was a bit young for a kebab, innit? <laughs> I didn't have my first kebab until I was 20. That's not the path that I envisage for my son. So, how do you feel about helping to shape it? I, I don't understand the question. Would you consider being Bertie's godfather? Sinead put you up to this. No, no, it was my idea, but she completely agrees. You're a wonderful dad with Joseph, and you've been really supportive, so... can't think of a better man to look after our son if anything happens to us. Really? Really, really. Well, I'll be honoured. Anti-inflammatories, soothing balms, you just got to know where to look. And where's that? Here. Made you some beard oil. I'll be making some more samples. Are you wearing yourself out? And will it stop, David, Sean telling any more clients? Yes. So, are you interested? Bearing in mind... You've I... got cancer, yeah. we know. But listen, cancer or not, Sinead, I reckon this is bang on trend for us. Brand, brand. Brand, then. 
So, yeah, make some more samples, price list, timetable, that sort of thing, and we'll have a chat. Yes. Sinead, I don't think that this is a good idea. Oh, I'll be fine. Don't worry. I'll make sure rest and everything. Please, just let me do something that's not about cancer for once. Something normal. Another dad who runs a blog, right? And he reckons that his kid won't get off to sleep unless he, the dad, sleeps on the floor outside of his bedroom. Mm. Something to look forward to. You OK? Yeah, I'm just a bit tired. I didn't sleep too well. The brachytherapy. <sighs> I think it's just, well, you know, the thought of what they've actually got to do. And then I'm going to be in there on my own. Yeah, but because of the radiation. Yeah, I know, I know. Listen to me. Everything's going to be OK. <laughs> How many times have you actually watched Love Actually? Sinead. Oh, um, I don't know. Maybe ten. Come here. You just have to hang on to the fact that it's just one more session. That's it. Then you're done. But what if it's not, though? I can't know that. You can't. Sinead, listen to me. Daniel, I'm scared. I'm scared of the treatment. I'm scared of the cancer. I'm scared that after all this, it, it won't be gone. We just had a newborn baby. This. This isn't how it's supposed to be, is it? Yeah, we have. So I'm feeling pretty lucky right now. <laughs> but what if your luck runs out? It won't. You can beat this. You're strong. I'm petrified. Because if this treatment doesn't work, and. <sighs> I don't know if I can go through it all over again. <sighs> you too. I, I thought you were going to the hospital. Yeah, we are. We are, yeah. We just thought we'd come in here first and watch you lot make a fool out of yourselves. Could have been that way. Turn your boards round is the wrong answer, which means you two are over and out. <laughs> How could you not know my middle name? Well, to be fair, I've not heard it that often. Steve, we've been married twice. <laughs> Want another drink, love? Yes, I'll have a large red wine. <laughs> I know this. Uh, it's Sinead Kimberly. Very good. Mm. Sinead after... Sinead after Sinead O'Connor in that music video. Mm, and Kimberly. After Victoria Woods, mate. My mum loved Victoria Wood. But my cousin would call Vicky, so... Yeah. I love you. Oh, I love you too. Gemma, it's your turn. We asked Chesney what celebrity couple you're most like. This will be good. Right, well, this is a hard one, because at first I was going to put Prince Harry and Megan... Don't Pat finish that sentence, because I swear down, I'm going to wet myself. <laughs> Take the noise. Come on, Jen. Right, is it... Ron and Hermione? Yes, it is! <laughs> You're not laughing now, are you? Well done, Gemma. And that means you're through to round two. <laughs> right, ladies and gentlemen, back in a tick. <laughs> you as a witch? Yeah, I could believe that. But Chesney, as a wizard, nah. At least my partner knows my name. Uh, middle name, and it's Lynn, actually. <laughs> Et, the, 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 Lynette. 
Anyway, by rights, me and Steve should automatically claim that prize because we're the only ones that are actually a Mr and Mrs. Just because we're not actually married doesn't mean we're not committed. Do you mean that? Yeah, of course I do. Another orange juice? Uh, right. No, you better not. I wish you could stay in there with me. Me too. Sorry for being such a wimp. Don't be silly. You're amazing. In fact, one of the reasons that you're so amazing is because you don't quite realise how amazing you are. If that makes sense. What would I do without you, eh? Fortunately for you, you're never going to have to find out. And when it's all over, me and our little boy will be waiting what for you. I need to see him. But I want you both to come with me. Okay. Jeez! How long did we work together? Yeah, exactly. When you live with someone, you know these things. Chicken salad. Oh. Maria's favourite sandwich is actually... And how am I meant to know that? Well, I knew that your first pet was a rabbit called Barney. David, I ate tuna mayo sandwiches practically every single day that we worked together. Yeah, maybe the reason you haven't got an actual boyfriend is because you're so boring. <gasps> <gasps> Sorry, that means you're out. So now it's a tie break between Gemma and Chez and Paul and Billy. Isn't it exciting? <laughs> yeah, seriously, I'm beside myself. Right. Gemma and Chesney, ready? Hit me. Paul and Billy, ready? Mm -hmm. Chesney, what would you say Gemma's biggest fault is? Oh, um... Be honest, okay? Same question for you, Billy. Paul's biggest fault. <sighs> okay. And when you're ready. Gemma and Chesney, turn your boards round. Ooh, I think you're going to need to conjure up a bit of magic to get out of that one, Ron Weasley. Paul <laughs> <laughs> and Billy? Oh, oh yes! <laughs> you won! <laughs> Score on then, Emma, what's the prize? Oh, ladies and gentlemen, can we have a massive round of applause for our Mr and Mrs? Too nice to mention the snoring. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> oh my gosh, that was wicked. I felt like no Edmonds. <laughs> Congratulations, guys. Cheers. Well, if I'd have got that question, I'd have got it right. Having said that, Steve, the list would be about this long. Yeah, but you still love me, Lindsay. Lynette. Oh, stop it. Hey, you're not fed up with lost, are you? You told me to be honest. Well, why did you lie to me earlier? About what? About you not wanting me to look after Joseph when you die. I think I'd like to stop talking about me dying. Me too. But you said it didn't have anything to do with me not being grown up enough or responsible enough. And the truth is you lied, because that is exactly what you think. <sighs> so it must be like a dark cloud hanging over her, but hopefully, once this final treatment is over... Well, they've got this ritual on the cancer ward that when you finish your treatment, you ring this bell. And I think that that's what she's been holding on to. Doesn't really seem like much, though, when you say it. Oh, not at all. No, it's a wonderful symbol of hope and strength and moving on. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Anyway, thanks for having Bertie. Are you sure you want to take him to the hospital with you? Yeah. That's what Sinead wants. <sighs> Carla. What exactly is going on with her? <sighs> it's a long story. Anyway, I'd probably better get going. Sinead only went home to fetch a bag. Okay. Thanks again, Dad. OK. And Daniel, she's going to be fine. I know. Hey, you're up. Just about. Oh, did you bring it all then? Yeah, it's all here. Oh, thanks. Right, um... These are to say thank you for everything. Oh. I can't say I enjoyed the chemo or the radiotherapy. The brachiotherapy was definitely the worst, oh. but, yeah, you've all just been really lovely, thank you. It's been a pleasure, Sinead. You've been a complete trooper. Thank you for looking after her. 
Are you ready? Yeah, I think so. Now, just read the poem and then ring the bell. I ring this bell for all to hear how strong I've been despite the fear. I thank those for their support along the way. Now my treatment's over. Cancer, please stay away. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm perfect. That was a big moment, that, today. Yeah, it's, uh, still sinking in. But I don't need to go back there and have things pumped in me and, you know, well, for now, anyway. Yeah, well, you're my hero for getting through it. Be no, I mean it. I'm gonna make you a costume with a cape. All the best superheroes have capes. Anyway, no more cancer talk or hospital talk, eh? All right. Well, how about some christening talk then? Yeah, no, that's more like it. What do you think about having a naming ceremony? as opposed to a churchy do. Mm. How would that work? Well, we d design the ceremony. You know, we pick readings and poems that represent us and Bertie. <laughs> it's just rather than it being all about some god, which, let's be honest, neither of us believes in. Mm. Like the wedding? Exactly. Yeah. It sounds perfect, that. Wow. Thought you were going to need a bit more persuading than that. Yeah, well, you are clearly taking advantage of the fact that I'm tired, comfortable and blissfully happy. Me too. Happy, I mean. Although, uh, I think my family will need a bit more convincing. They love a good old christening, they do. It's like a tinker tradition. <sighs> Shh, Cape girl. <laughs> You're a superhero now. Your family don't stand a chance. Mm. <laughs> I've booked the bistro. Mm. Sorted cake. Oh, and cherry on top. A guitarist. Hmm. What kind of guitarist? I don't think Slash will be right for a christening, do you? <laughs> well, naming ceremony. Mm. And no, he's not really that kind of performer. He's uh, acoustic. All oh, right. Well, yeah. As long as he's not expensive. No, no, he's not. He's brilliant. He's one of the music students at uni. I think it's his looks that have held him back, that's all. His looks? Yeah, he's a bit nerdy. Hey, I'm sorry you've had to sort all this out. That's all right. You've been focusing on getting well again. That's much more important. Yeah. Hey, oh, I did have one idea, though. Shoot. Right, what about my Auntie Beth reading out a poem? She into poetry? Well, she's written a fair bit. Well, in the ladies' underworld. <laughs> I don't think we'll um, want her to read any of that out. I see. But I, well, I just thought we could pick one for her. It'll get my family involved a bit more. Yeah, I suppose we do want both families equally invested. Yeah, OK, great. We'll hit the anthologies later. Oh, good. I don't really know that much poetry. Oh, there was a young man from Venus. Oh, oh have... we, we can choose some up for you. I feel right daft. I recited a poem in assembly once for Mrs Lloyd, my English teacher. She was a bit weird. She used to wear a shawl and tinted glasses. I still remember it to this day. Oh, come on then, Kurt. Let's hear it. Yeah, it might do for the naming ceremony. <sighs> I'm not too sure, but here goes. <clears throat> Forms, bubba, tears, eu, pagif, quie. Oh, de la beba, de la beba fumsba. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What the hell's that meant to be? I thought you said she was an English teacher. Well, she was, to a nervous breakdown. She said it was da-da. Gaga, more like. 
You can't stand up in front of folk making noises like that. Oh, no, they'll think you're having a funny turn. Yeah, it's certainly not suitable for a christening. Hey, it's not a christening at all, Jo. Oh, I don't know. Report with your pagan wedding. Well, I think this is a step too far. Tinkers have always been christened. Yeah, I've never been to a church since. Unless someone's getting married or buried. And have you told your mum and your gran about your godless little ceremony? Not in detail, no. Ah, oh, so they don't know it's a naming ceremony. Well, I'd put them straight before the big day, else there'll be a few names flying around, all right? And not the sort you want on a birth certificate. Even that bothered about God. He used to keep a tin of potatoes in to put in a collection whenever we went to a wedding. Oh, I am not condemning Bertie to hell. He can make his own mind up when he's older. It... Right, Mum, you're not... You're not even listening. Mum! Mum! Uh... Take it that didn't go down too well, then. They are obsessed with the idea of a christening. Hmm. We don't want them bouncing us into something that we don't believe in. Do we? Honestly? I just want a nice day for everyone. And if that's only going to happen if we have it in a church, then, well... I'm not that bothered. As long as everyone I care about is there and... They're happy for us. <laughs> so what do you reckon to this uh, non-christening? Oh, the naming ceremony, you mean? No, I think it's a splendid idea. Hmm. You would. You're as heathen as they are. You never struck me as the religious type. Well, I'm not constantly tugging God's apron, but I'm there for him when it matters. Oh, I'm sure he's very grateful for that. And uh, as a devoted servant, you know that I believe that a sacrament such as baptism represents a solemn commitment to the faith that should never be undertaken lightly. Pagans, the lot of you. Come on, come on, come on. Wait. Look what you've done. That won't me. Your dog. Peanut, you naughty girl. You've christened Ken's shoes. Sorry. Named him. No, don't provoke me. The council are clamping down on dog fouling and they're handing out council tax rebates for people who report offenders. All right, keep your wig on. I'll clean it up. You got some up? You carry bags? Ah, uh, I've left them at home. Yeah. You own stash? I suppose it pays to be careful at your age. Decision for us. Where's it going to end? What wallpaper we can have? Where we can go on holiday? I mean, are we actually going to have to run everything past them? Of course not. We hardly see him for one thing, but we are going to see him tomorrow. And if they're not happy, they'll make damn sure I'm not as well. Yeah, which will mean that I won't be. But it's booked. It's paid for. Mm. Maybe we could ask Billy if he'll do us a small church ceremony. Mates, rates. Does God even do those? I thought he was supposed to be everybody's friend. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, yeah. We could go do the church formalities and then go back and do the naming ceremony. That way, nothing goes to waste. Right, well, I think I should probably remind Tracy to bring an umbrella. We don't want to get in third degree burns now, do we? Auntie Beth, have you thought any more about doing your poem? you thought any more about your pagan ritual? It is not a pagan ritual. You might not be dancing around a fire naked or sacrificing chickens, but God's not on the guest list, is he? He is, actually. Yeah. Daniel sports a billet and we're going to have a traditional christening. Oh. Oh, I see. My mum and my sisters put the foot down up there. No. No. I decided we should have a traditional christening and a naming ceremony. That way, everyone is happy. Good. Pleased to hear it. So, does that mean that you'll read out a poem? Well, now there's a font involved, it's the least I could do, I suppose. So long as it's not too poncy. We'll try our best. Consult the Oxford Book of non poncy verse. I'll bring it over tonight. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks, mm -hmm. Auntie Beth. Thank you, Auntie Beth.
Bye. Bye, love. See ya. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How are you feeling? A bit emotional, actually. You big softy. Are you kidding me? After everything that we've been through, your treatment, the birth... Mm, but here we are. Mm -hmm. Oh, and here they are. Remember them, my family? Play nice. Don't worry, I've warned them to behave. Hello. Hi, Mum. Hello, darling. And here's my gorgeous oh. grandson. Oh, do you want to hold him? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Oh, hello, beautiful Bertie. Hi. Have you missed me? Oh, the Tinker family christening gown. Yeah, I'm glad you've seen sense and are going for a proper christening. Yeah, well, we know how much it means to everyone, don't we, yeah? Mm. Yeah, yeah, we do. Although we are going to also have a naming ceremony. I don't know why you're bothering with one of them. They don't mean anything, do they? Mum. Well, actually, a christening... Daniel? ...is a lovely family event. Yeah, and it bonds him with God, doesn't it? Yeah, if you believe in God, which I don't. You don't believe in God? Well, who made our list then? Builders. <laughs> and who made the builders? All right, all right. This is Bertie's day, not yours. Tea? Thanks, Auntie Beth. Don't worry, I'm on guard today. I'm not going to let anyone ruin this christening. You can fill the unforgiving minute with 60 seconds worth of distance run. Yours is the earth and everything that's in it. And which is more, you'll be a man, my son. Aww. Aww. Well done, Auntie Beth. You read it perfectly. <laughs> I you went with Kipling. Why can't I pick Kipling? Well, of course you can. It's just you didn't show much interest in his work when you were in school. Well, I don't think much of his poems, but I do love his cakes. Here, yeah, did you pick that? Of course I didn't. Daniel did. There you go. Oh, thanks, Chess. <laughs> it does mean a lot to us, you know, knowing that Bertie's got you as a godfather. Especially with Tracy's godmother. Ain't it a bit weird, though, cos you two used to, you know... Oh, that's what makes it more special. We're not together, but I still love you as a mate. Oh, I love you and all. Come here. Don't let Daniel hear you say that. Hey, old Gemma. I'm not sure she'd be bothered, to be honest. Um, Steve's not here, yeah? No, still looking for a christening present. Oh, that'll mean he's nipped off to the pub then. Well, he better not have done. Right. Has everybody written one of these advice cards for Bertie? Yep. Yeah. Don't aim too high, then you'll never be disappointed. Ah, oh, that's lovely. I'm not sure that's good advice. I think we should be encouraging Bertie to achieve great things. It's more important to be happy than successful. Well, with the right guidance, I think Bertie could be both. What have you written, then? Uh, I'm ruminating, hoping to come up with the perfect nugget of advice. What about try not to be an indecisive, judgmental old git? There's no need for that. He was having a go at my Kirky. Don't be daft. He was just helping, weren't you, Ken? Yeah, constructive criticism. Uh, are we all behaving ourselves? Some of us are. Look, right, my dad is in a bad mood because he's been fined from the council for not picking up Eccles' poop. Is that right? Oh, shame on you, Kenneth. Wasn't me. I just feel so helpless not being able to phone and sort this out. Dad, get over it. Pay the fine and move on. But I haven't done anything. Look, darling, I'll ring them in the morning and sort everything out, OK? But it says in this letter that somebody sent photos, and I want to know who that is. Oi! Where the hell have you been? Oh, well, all over the place, really. I ended up in a knick-knack shop. Did you buy some tap from Devs and then pop into the Rovers for half an hour? No, I wouldn't do that to you all. Really? Let me smell your breath. Oh, mints. Steve, that is a smoking gun. Hey, Gemma, it's me. You give me a call when you get this message. All right, well, I hope you're feeling better.
Still no answer. Uh, she's probably sleeping it off. Oh, back in the pub. Yeah, I need to get Joseph. See you later, mate. Fate. Fate, Dan? <laughs> this gift? I did, and what of it? Sorry, but to slather a baby in orange skin dye is... It, it's unconscionable. Don't you pick on my mum's gift. You're safer than some baby. I suppose you'd rather him get skin cancer. That's a little bit insensitive, don't you think, given what Sinead's just been through? <sighs> all right, all right. Can everyone just calm down, please? Do you mean she started it? He started it by slacking our Prezi off. Right, I am not okay. bothered who started it, but I'm finishing it. No more arguing, OK? That's the rule. If you can't be nice with each other, then I'll chuck you out myself. Oh, I don't... Oh, babe, sorry I'm late. Oh, oh, don't worry about it. Why don't you go get yourself a drink, yeah? Right, everyone, let's have some photos, shall we? Oh, yeah. Craig, are you ready? Yeah, I've done a list of suggested groups. Ah, oh, thank you. Flipping it, we'll be here forever. Oh, babe, I'll draw this before you get stuck in. I want a picture of me and Sinead with it. I want to be in it too. Yeah, I'll take it for you. Oh, no, no, don't give it him, his fingers and thumbs. Oh, Mum, you take it. I can't love him, I'm a Me too. Don't worry, don't worry. I'm quite capable of operating a telephone camera now. Get together, big smile, and... Ah, did I take that? No, I don't think you did. Oh. I don't know what I've done, but I seem to have brought up your photos. Uh, I'll fix it, give it me. No. You, you can explain why you have photos on your phone of my dog, Claudia, a big pile of poo. What you so? What earth are you talking about? Well, you had to go at me when Peanut did a plot. I was helping you. Yeah, right. Proper public shaming it was. I was merely pointing out that the council were clamping down on it. I always pick up after Rover. I like to check the consistency, you know. Well, if it's too hard, then she's had too many biscuits. If it's too soft... All right, Steve. We get it. And it's extremely dangerous. People can go blind from dog mess. Yeah, and cat mess at all. Yes, yeah, stop picking on dogs. Now you're being ridiculous. And you're the one who didn't pick it up in the first place. It's you that should be fine. I, I, I swear I didn't know she'd gone. You stood right next to her. I don't know if Eccles could even do that much. Everybody just needs to calm down. I'll calm down when he apologises. Well, why should I apologise? I haven't done anything. You said you wouldn't let anyone ruin today, and you're the one who's spoiling it now. I know it did, but he's having to go at everyone in our family. I'm doing no such thing. And you only reported me to get the council tax rebate. Oh, no, we doomed. Our families are just never going to get on, are they? Don't think like that. They'll have to get on eventually. I hope so, because I can't take much more of this. Apologise. I should apologise. I haven't really done anything wrong, have I? You're the one who crossed them up to the council. For, for everyone's sake, just go and apologise. No, come on, not may as well go. No one's fun stopped. No, not yet. But you're the one that said you oh, wanted to go. Yeah, yeah I, I know that, it. Steve, but I think it's going to kick off again and I don't want to miss it. Hmm. Hey? Yeah. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Yes, I am. Sex in the box. No, not this time. I think that cake is going to get thrown. Hmm. All right, well, uh, Fiber says that Beth chucks the first piece. Nah. I think it'll be Claudia. Do you know, I reckon she's proper rough under that posh exterior. All right, you're on. Fiver? Yeah, betcha. I'm sorry about all the arguments today. Hey, it's not your fault. You've been lovely. Yeah. Everybody else has been a nightmare, though, mm. including me. I've tried reasoning with Beth, but she won't listen to anyone when she's like this. Yeah, my dad's the same. I'd hope that little Bertie might bring everyone together. Nope. I don't think anything will. We need a miracle, Kirk. Uh, right, everyone. Um, we've got our christening cake, if you'd like some. Oh, yeah, please. Uh, I've lost my appetite. Don't be such a misery. Right, I hope everybody likes it, because we went through a lot of effort for this. <laughs> You've done a grand job. Nice little message on the icing, too. What's it say? It says, Bertie's... Oh, for God's sake, there's no apostrophe. That's not how you spell christening. Thought you would have known that, being all brainy and everything. 
Well, I didn't put it, did I? I rang them and told them what to put. I'm going to have to complain. Oh, it's fine. We'll be eating it soon anyway. Yeah. And I'm fine with badly punctuated cake. <coughs> Great. There you go. Oh, yeah, let me help. It's obviously the cake maker that can't spell, not Daniel. Oh, here we go. Just like the poop. There you go, It's Claudia. always someone else's fault. Yeah, well, that was your fault and yours. Ken, will you please give it a rest? Yeah, Ken, even your gobby girlfriend thinks you're out of order. Right, pack it in, Mum. Oh, did you hear that, Claudia? She just called you gobby. Do not put words into my mouth. I'll put my fist in your mouth if you don't pipe down. Awesome cake. Why don't you wind your stupid neck in? <laughs> Oh. You leave my mate alone! Oh. Mum! Boot fan! Hey, no! Move away from the cake. I will use this. Oh, just stop it, everyone! Stop it! One, two, one, two. Hello, Weatherfield. Perky? Are we ready to rock? Perky, what are you doing? There's too much aggro. I'm trying to distract people. Well, you've certainly done that. Now, put the guitar down, get dressed and stop messing around. No, you need to get away from my stage. What stage? Security! <laughs> now, a lot of you know me as Kirk. Because it's your name, you muppet. <laughs> hey, don't call him a muppet. But I've not always been known as Kirk. Oh, I knew there was something dodgy about him. Why don't you shut up? When I was younger, my uncle bought me a guitar and he used to play it at school concerts under the name of El Kirko. Oh, <laughs> hey, psst. not the most imaginative of names, eh? But there you go. <laughs> now, we're all here today to support Daniel and Sinead. And I'm sorry to say this, but some of us have ruined things by being selfish and arguing. Now, I'm not naming any names, but I'm looking at you, Beth and Ken. Hey, I never knew Kirk could play guitar. Mm, me neither, actually. Okay. Now I'd like to dedicate this song to Sinead, Daniel and Bertie. It's called Your Soul, My Soul, Our Souls. Did he just say? Yes, yes he did. Our souls are beautiful. He loves the zoo, does Kirky. You had so not the rain, apparently. So He's got a good voice, but you really need to have a word with him about his lyrics. Thinking about the supermarket next. So said, let's go. Help me young it up at fresco. Just singing your shopping list. And you bought yourself some hummus. No, you don't buy hummus. And that's why life is good. Thank you! Thank you, everyone! Thank you! Superstar Popstar! Hey, was that all right, then? Oh, yeah, better than all right. You were extraordinary. I was so relieved. I was worried people wouldn't like it. Oh, give over. You were great, mate. Yeah, even Bertie loved it, didn't you, see? You, uh, write all your own lyrics then, Kirky? Yeah. Don't know where I get my ideas from, though. They just come to me. Mad, innit? Don't you think they're a bit unusual? I know, but that's my thing. I'm really into the words and what they mean. I think about it all for hours. Those lyrics are me. Without them, there's no point. They're the most important bit. They touch people's hearts. And souls. Exactly. Look at this inside just now. What's that? It's very... You need to line your stomach. What? I'm not hearing that. Want some chips. There's nothing wrong with you. Well, this has been a disaster. Honestly, I don't think we should have any more joint family events. Mm, I agree. Just us three at Christmas from now on, ain't it? Mm. And Kirk. Yeah. Uh, on the condition that he doesn't sing. I've <laughs> read anything so funny. Oh, it was stupid. Somebody has got to tell him how bad his lyrics are. Do not. Well, just having a laugh, Ken. Yeah. What's happened? Well, it might be a big laugh to you, but Kirk is your friend. And it's cruel to mock. 
You was mocking my cookie? No, babes, we were just having a laugh. Don't you babes me. It's only a bit of banter. Yeah, well, banter or not, it's very courageous of Kirk to get up there and do that. You two should be ashamed of yourself. What's he going to do in another set? What do you reckon? Um, I think it's best to leave people wanting more. Yeah, yeah. Quit while you're ahead. Maybe you're right. You'll give me time to write some new songs as well. Cheers. Thanks for sticking up for him. Um... <laughs> I'm sorry if you thought I was judgmental over Peanuts droppings. Yeah, I'm sorry for dobbing you into the council. It was mean. Well, friends? No. Typical. I offer you the hand of friendship in... Family! Have <laughs> <laughs> you seen this? Well, that's an Easter miracle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs>